work, but we're going to have to find out. So I am going for the top bloke side. Of course, they had their pretty much their decal added to the game with that <laughs> amazing new suit decal. It's definitely something special, but something else that's special is we are finally getting underway with our first match of the day, to see. Top bloke's sorry, game one. Our first match of the qualifiers is a best of five. Finally, the Grand Prix is here. So the players, Flame is rocking that decal that you were talking about. The beautiful tux, he's looking good. And the good look and just continues on the side of Top Blokes. That's a beautiful infield pass, Archie finishing it off and already showing off that offensive strength. Throwing off something else as well as, of course, our amazing overlay we've had made for the Grand Prix. And well, just say, I think when we first seen this overlay, we could not take our eyes off of it. It was definitely something to behold. And even still watching these games, it's just amazing to see how far these overlays have came. And I really hope to see more advantage of them in the future. So, should we keep an eye on some great stats over there? And well, I'm just excited for Rocket Grand Prix, to be honest. And a 1 0 start for Top Blokes, an amazing beginning. A great demo to start things off, but can it solve it? Turn the favour up, find the ball will go, flame with a clear away. Upfield, met by Kerrion. The boom out to the side, looking for that pass. Exotic, the drop down, centre of Kerrion, beat to the ball by Cassio. Trying to get this clear away now, Exotic rushing back to net. Top Blokes straight back on the attack, hunting to make it two. It's a bit of a boom again being happening right now. Just a lot of long clears on both sides, not taking the ball slow keeping it in control as they say that of course flame does try and do exactly that archie to the side as well yukis misses that that's another opportunity cassio oh. gets the shot gets the goal it's two nil for top blokes two oh to top blokes a great pass from archie and who can score it off the bat ball straight to cassio you will be able to finish that off 112 kilometers per hour shot They'll find the back of the net. 2 0 -oh, top bloke. An explosive start only 90 seconds in. Can they keep this up? And it's a touch on what we were talking about earlier with the top bloke side. Archie, that player who, I guess, a lot of eyes are being laid on for top blokes. And coming from the clappers that Archie, Joras, and Calix team, he was, I think, my favourite player on that team to watch. He had the most promise for me. I think Joras as an individual is a really strong player and probably one of the biggest upcoming talents but Archie in a team dynamic is one of the best assets you can have and I think that's showing on top blocks of how well he is meshed in with this roster of Flaming Cassio he's really quickly started working well with these guys as a team and they've got some good wins under their belt and they're looking to find another one again so are they right down today yeah great start there and like you said Archie is someone that we've seen a lot in the bubble scene from and we knew that he was a name to watch and an upcoming player but it's really just impressed me how easily he's really switched up this style of play. He used to always be this carry, almost uh, almost the style of Astral would be the first one to come to mind, just because he's so strong mechanically. But he's really changed it up and really plays as a team player. It's lovely to see, and it's working out wonders so far for Top Blokes in this first game. Well, with half the game going, Solari, not very prominent in the offense. Only two shots taken in total. A potential chance now with Kerry and up, beat by Flame. We're rushing for that ball, he will find the save. A demo on Yukis now. Exotic. I to take his time, wait for the respawn. Flame over one. A good bump on Yukis. The follow up coming in, not going to make it in time. Kerry can take control. Over one, he'll go. Low on. Booth cannot continue. Archie up high. Looking for the pass out. Pass one. Flame can't make it in time. That's it, a bat ball. Kerry trying to take control, but top block so so aggressive. Going for the bumps, going for the demos, not giving Solari a chance to breathe. Finally, a counter attack chance, but shut down instantly. But it feels like Solari's just pushing up too far every single time. Normally, I'm not a fan of the big clears coming out from top blocks, but it's working because Solari's just pushed up so far. The ball gets hurled over their heads, they can't get it anymore, and it's just another term of uh, pressure coming out from top blokes two more chances here oh. Casio finds the goal make it three in this one boyer top blokes are dismantling this defense at the moment and they're so well positioned they're just always yeah. ready for the follow-up looking at that mini map you can just see they're constantly rotating around ready for that follow-up ready for their teammate to miss as soon as that miss happens they are there to finish it off follow up find a pass and that team cohesion is exactly what they need to have they need to know to trust their teammate but we're ready for him to make a mistake. 
A bit unfortunate on the go, I feel, as well. I thought there was a save coming in, but I, I think one of the uh, Solari players actually ended up saving the save so that it turned on into a goal anyway. A bit unfortunate there inside of Solari. And right now, they're really struggling to get into this game. They're just being outpaced. They're missing balls that you would expect these kind of pays to just hit to the side. And they put it into danger anyway. And on the other side, Archie just seems absolutely in his element. He's a natural at this level of play. Archie loving life at the moment. One goal, two assists, 100% goal participation. That I said about him being the playmaker of the team, he is that asset that, that any team will want to have. And it pre improves finally with two amazing saves. Barely keeping the house, keeping the clean sheet intact. And at this stage, it doesn't matter if that goal went in, it's just for the stats at this stage. Three all top votes in game one. 10 seconds left, and what a dominant start to this series, just it. For sure, it's gonna make not even Solary uh, very scared, but the upcoming opposition will definitely not be too happy with this showing from top blokes as well as they put in yet another, just for a uh, good sake. I, I don't even know what top blokes is doing at the moment, but it's looking really good, way better than Solary in this first game. Four go for top blokes and still 100% goal participation for Archie. Just to top it all off, can Cassie will find the fifth just for the fun of it as it drops down in front of Nate. He finds a pass out to play. What can't this team do? 5 0. What a game one. They are showing us what they're ready for. Oh, at this point, what do you do as Solary? Because it's five goals. It's not just you've just barely lost. You got absolutely destroyed here. In this first game by top blokes, they really need to change a lot of things here after this first game. And we can see it from our stat sheet, Archie the MVP of that game and most touches on the field as well is constant pressure, topping all the stats pretty much. Most goals, most assists, most shots, most saves, most ball touches, most time in the air. The possession from top blokes for one, 63%, they had constantly had pressure. They were constantly having the ball in the solo they have, putting pressure on, finishing their chances, which is the most important part. They were getting shots and they were scoring them. Yeah, and just overall Solary, I feel like they were too much in each other's space. They weren't spaced out well and it just made it so that all of them were approximately guarding the same part of the pitch and guarding the same body. It just made it very awkward and they couldn't ever get out of that pressure coming in from top blokes. But I really love the way that they've done it because basically with Freaky, what we used to see is them just sitting in net and having the rotations. But now they have those exact same rotations but in offense, and it's so hard to defend against. Just take Solary as an example. Yeah, I think what was touched on earlier on the desk is that people have the complaints of the top load side, you know, calling them a, a boring team, a team that isn't the most fun to watch at times, but I think that's definitely changing for a lot of people, and I think becoming a team to behold and enjoy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Danny was, uh, was saying that uh, his... Um, his prediction or, or at least his opinions might be a bit uh, controversial on the side of top blokes because well they, they are this boring team but with the way that they're playing now it's not that case at all they are very offensively minded and to be honest they've gone from a, a boring i would say a boring team to watch to an absolute treat you know i, I would agree with you that i think that their place that you worked it was effective but in terms of being fun to watch and for viewers it wasn't the kind of, I guess, preferred thing to watch. And yeah, the flashy. This, this change, though, is they keep that kind of tight defense and really strong kind of counter-attack ability. But it had it with such a powerful offense in Archie. He's making these amazing passes. He's making these great shots. And I think with him up front, it's really changed the team dynamic, but in a way better way. Yeah, for sure. But if we're going to talk about team dynamic, we have to look at the other side of the pitch as well. On the side of Solary Yuki's coming in fresh of that Magnifico squad, which is basically the same sort of level that Archie used to play as, but Archie just seems much more natural in his setting, obviously. Uh, there's a different teammates that you play around. I think Archie is really allowed to play that carry role, whereas Yuki is, is kind of more slotting into a team-reliant role, uh, a bit more supportive. But overall, he's just been really invisible in this first game, and I really would like to see him step it up. I really would like to do so, and we're going to quickly test the server, get things sorted, so we'll be back in a moment's time, but I guess we've touched a lot on top blows, and as we were starting to get to, 
over on the Solary side, the Solary side, sorry, Yukison, has he worked, has he became a good part of that new team dynamic? Is he working out at the moment? My questions are, well, my answers are currently <laughs> no, but we didn't get much chance to see him. He wasn't really doing much that game and we need to see more of him. Yeah, for sure. And I think just in general, Solari seemed really shaky. Like I said before as well, they really need to sort out the communication. They need to start playing as a unit because that's the way that we saw them uh, really just dominate throughout the RLRS and, and get their sport into the RLCS, which, which obviously isn't quite RLCS anymore. But still, that was a feat and a half and they had insane stats throughout that entire tournament but it seemed like Malishisu back then was already the guy to look out for and, and sort of the carry of the team and Yukis just hasn't been performing at the same level I can't fault him for it but it is hurting the team as a whole it certainly is and I do hope to see him stay puppy as that kind of young prodigy player that we want to see the best run we want to see improve and I think we will see that I think over time we will see Yukis kind of rise to the top of course on my nephew he was an excellent player along with the M Raid Atomic Jewel. That team had their split up and these players have went their separate ways trying to find their teams. But I think every single one of them has that capability to rise to the top and really, really start pushing. And of course, we now have RLCS the grid, which are going to be coming up and taking place. And I think we'll be seeing a lot of those teams like, um, or players on those teams that are participating in there. Yeah, for sure. It's just gonna, there's gonna be a lot more Rocket League, and it's gonna really show uh, who is gonna be the absolute top of the RLCSX because there's just so many more tournaments that you have to play, that you have to perform well in before you actually know which teams are good. We're gonna have all those games now, and just having this Grand Prix, I can't stress it enough. The desk has talked about it as, as well, but this is basically sort of the kickoff for RLCSX in Europe, I believe. It is the first look at the absolute best rosters that the region has to offer. Yeah, especially since the RLCSX roster lock is coming next week. It is in a week's time that that will be the case. So these teams are wanting to try out these rosters and make sure things are set, ready to go, up to perfection. And this is what this tournament's for. So I expect teams to be playing to their best ability. They've got a lot to prepare for. And well, I'm excited for RLCS. I'm excited for the Grand Prix that continues. We are going to get some high very sorry very high quality rocket <laughs> for sure for sure and i'm getting the impression that we're almost ready to get us straight back into that high level action that you're talking about bit of a server issues all is fine now and the teams are ready but it's gonna hurt the top blokes just a little bit you've just come over five or win if you were to carry on that momentum that would have been one hell of a start for your game two unfortunately a bit of a break but for solary a bit of time to reflect on what happened in that game one definitely a bit of time as our players are just getting ready to come in um obviously i gonna expect your answer to be oh i think i know what your answer to this question will be but <laughs> do you still have top blokes winning game two i think it's just gonna be more of top blokes i think they are gonna continue where they left off shows why they are looking so strong as a team archie the man of the match in making for me. Man of the match in the making, I think, for sure. But as we get game two underway, will they be able to keep that up? So they yet to score this serious game one, a 5 0 defeat. And I think anything better than that will be a, a, nice, a nice change, I think. I don't think they want to get 5 0 <laughs> once again. Is, that would definitely not boost the morale for that lower bracket, which will be starting off tomorrow. So. Let's see if they can turn things around. Kerry and straight on attack, looking to do exactly that. Flame will meet the ball in defense. The ball drops down. Yukis cannot force it away past Archie. Pass back to Flame. The pressure on Solari. They are trying on the attack. They're making the shot, but Archie, the man in defense, Casio. finds the save. What's he not doing? But Cassio on attack now to try and do it all himself. Saved by Exotic. Archie with the pass back now. Straight back to Flame. Yukis upfield. A good connection, oh, yes. that's a goal, finally on the score sheet, Solary, they find their first goal. I don't know what they did in that break, but I would love to see more of it. That's such a great clear from Yuki's absolute banger towards Karrion, who was in a perfect position as well. And I love to see that you do not want to do nothing after you've been taken out of the rotation. You find yourself upfield, you make yourself available for the pass, and a quick counter-attack from Solary puts them in a driving seat for game two. 
exotic. Oh, field to try and make it two. The great dunk, the drop down. Kerry in a rushing in, can't find it in time. Yukas the pass back in centre. The exotic has to back off. Low on boost. Yukas finds the mid. Gonna fall under the ball. Archie back in attack now to find this. He got it in the pass to flame. That's a pie. Casio lucky around already to go for the ball. Barely beaten to it. Archie the tap back. Met by exotic. Another oh, chance to score. That's a shot. Oh. Off the crossbar. Barely missing out. One or oh, the score remains. Sorry, or I look like a different team at the moment. You say they're looking like a different team, and I, I agree, but that still should have been a goal from Exotic. He just missed that shot, even though it was completely open. The demo broke up that defense, and yet they couldn't find the goal, which is going to hurt them, because I do think that this top bloke's team is very resilient and can absolutely come back in a game like this. Oh, oh but not Kenny. a Garyan slots that in. Well, you're talking about top bloke coming back. They've got a higher deficit to come back from now. Is Solary. They extend their lead to two. Oh, a great shot from Kerry and Lucas. A lovely pass in. 2 0 oh, Solary. An excellent turn around, but there's still three minutes left of this game. Plenty of time for top boat to come back. It's Flame and Net will barely find that save. Solary's not going to slow down. They're putting the pressure on right away, and they want to extend their lead as much as humanly possible. Yeah, for sure, even two goals against this top bloke side might not be enough because they can strike out of absolute nowhere. We've talked about Archie, we've talked about this skill, and you can just basically, whenever you see him on the ball, you can expect absolute magic to happen. And a goal to fall out of nowhere, that miss almost being detrimental. Now on the other side, Yukis brings it back, can't find the pass though. Oh, he does actually. No follow up there, very awkward still though for top blokes. A double commit, but it does work out. Exotic flying and stealing that ball from Yukis, but he will find the goal either way. 3 0 Sony now, and what a <laughs> turnaround this has been. What a team play there as well. That was a burst of double commits, but working out on the side of Solary, and the entire game has just completely shifted on its head, boy. You saw the first game so strong for top blokes. 5 0, which is such a big deal. In competitive Rocket League and now on the other side, Solary just completely switches it around and says, you can win five, no, well, we'll just be up three after three minutes. Three now already to Solary, and with two minutes left on the clock, can top will come back, and, you know, you talked about Solary and a bit of time to regroup, recuperate, get ready for this next match, and I think they've done exactly that. They've prepared for this match after that bit of connection issues, getting things ready for game two, and they took full advantage of the time they've had. They have got straight into fifth gear and are going full out trying to take down their top boat side. It's not easy to take a take out, but so they are showing that it's definitely possible. Ooh, and yet another try for a chance for top blokes, but they can't quite find the passes that they did manage to find in that game one. I do like that demo though, that seemed to be working well for them in the first game too, but at least one or two goals like that. But right now, Solaris defense looking much, much stronger than game one. And the miss is coming back on the side of Flame. you got to be hitting those kind of balls. He just sails past. Oh, one minute left. Top balls, they need to score on this next attack to have any hope of taking this game. Up through the ball will go. Casio, the drop down. That's the goal. There is still hope and two goals needed. It's going to be a tough one. It's a minute to go. Karrion couldn't find the clear. Flame had that uh, clear and then... Getting the demo just for good fashion as well. Casio very quickly gets the goal. And now top blokes, yet another chance in this game. Another chance. Casio winning on the kickoff. Trying to find the follow-up. Fed to the ball by Kerry and sent it back to Archie. Top blokes need to act fast. Time is not in their favour. The drop down. Solely. Just trying to run down the clock. Take control. Find another to secure the game. And that would surely be it. But two goals needed in 30 seconds. This has got to be it for top blokes. Casio to Archie on the dribble and a fake out Yukis off the back wall. The follow up not there in time. Great defending by Soli, but that's coming in centre. It could be a chance. The pressure remains. Archie back round the corner, coming in centre. Flame, a shot. Oh, oh, oh bum! There's 20 seconds. One goal needed. Top blokes have a chance. Oh, and it looked like so long, Soli. We're the ones that were going to take this, but now the pressure is all on them. Two people, both Casio and 
Uh, I believe it was Archie just absolutely hunting for that bump or demo. They did find it. The shot was good enough. Now 2-3, 20 seconds to go. Flame puts it up high. Cassio wanted to go, but Flame called him off. Still follows it up. Bump trying to be getting there. Archie can't quite find a good touch now. That clear has got to be it for Solary. It's got to be it. He's trying to follow up. Can't make it in time. Flame, a last ditch effort. Cannot get the launch up. Fielding is trying to send this to the ground. Archie will not catch. Solary will take game two. But that became very close at the end. That was definitely much closer than Solary wanted it to be. They had such a strong showing for the first half of the game. Even more than first half. For like a four, first four minutes. And then that last minute, you still, you got a bit scared of the goals coming in from the side of Top Lokes. But I especially like the bumps and the demos that Top Lokes are going for. Whenever one of them finds themselves in front of the ball, in between basically the ball and the goal, they'll be hunting for that goalie. And it's so hard to see it coming and it's working wonders for them. Yes, they lost this game, but they got two cheeky goals by it. Yeah, some great demo plays, great bump plays. I always love to see them. You know, earlier on, just uh, after that game one, we were talking about what is Yukis' role in this team? How is it going to work? I think we found exactly what his <laughs> role is. Yeah. Three goals scored for Solary, three assists found for Yukis. I think we know exactly what, kind of, what he's kind of doing for this team. He is making those passes, making those plays, giving the opportunities to his teammates, and really they're taking full advantage of it. They've been able to find three goals, one apiece now. How will game three unfold for us, Juicy? That's the real question. I'm not sure. What I do think is very interesting is if we look at the time spent in the air, a lot more on the side of Solary and Top Lokes just playing the entire game on the ground, but it seems like they're getting outpaced in the air. They're letting Solary do their stuff when we didn't see that big a discrepancy after that game one. So that might be something to look out for. Top Lokes should be forced to play in the air and then Solary put themselves into a very good position here in game three. Well, game number three, the turning point for both teams. If Solary can keep this up and take it to match point in their favour, it'll be a great turnaround at top low. Was that game just a blip? They started coming back near the end. They started looking a lot more confident back to their former selves. Will game three come to show a similar story to game number one? We're going to have to find out in five minutes' time. The Flame brings the ball out centre, looking for that pass, and no one there to receive. Feed away, upfield, sorry, looking for the counter, not working out just yet, Archie going to back off. The flame working around, ready to attack Exotic, up the side wall. Archie beats the ball, the drop down, Cassio trying to continue but Yukis is ready. Sorry, meeting these balls in the midfield, sending them straight back to the top floats net, and putting that pressure on non-stop. But I do think the passes right now for Solary are always connected. Oh, that's a terrible miss though, Flame. One on one against Exotic. He can't quite find the pass, nor the shot. That's a bit unfortunate oh, on the side of Top Bloods. Archie! Oh, oh. That would have been a crazy angle there. Oh, go on, Archie. Do it again. He was so close to forcing his way through. But the score remains now and now for the time being. Back it off is Kerry. The pass out to the side where Yukis awaits. Outfield to the backboard, met by Flynn, they drop down to Cassio, looking to do it all again. The pass, he sees Archie down, not able to find the touch, Kerry and beats him to it. The aggression from Solary working out really well in their favour. They're attacking these plays before they can start to develop. Starting the chances down, constantly going for the ball, constantly keeping that pressure on. Finally a chance for Cassio as he goes upfield, but Yukis has control of the ball. The drop down, out to the side, Yukis a great touch. Walking Archie's pass away, not gonna work out yet for top lots and Sorry and Death straight on the attack. That's to the corner, the drop down, Archie to clear away. Upfield it'll go to the battle. Another chance for top lots, but no one there to follow. Where is the follow up? And it's so close though between these two teams right now, boy. We saw two very one sided games before, but now both teams just kind of taking it a tad slower, trying to find these slow plays, get the teammates set up rather than. He goes shooting the ball forward. You see it there as well. That's a beautiful passing play going out from top blows. The shot isn't too dangerous, though. This one might be. Cashio almost beating out his direct opponent. Couldn't quite manage to do it. But a lot of chances on both sides, but none of them are too dangerous. Get in. Seeing the ball for exotic. Up here to go. Archie a chance. A wide open net. It's going to slip in top blows. Finally, have the lead. 
And obviously, just as I talk about it not being too dangerous, Archie just sneaks the ball past from the midfield. There should be someone back there for Solary. Nobody was. You can see exactly what happened there down left in the mini map. But now Top Lokes leading in this game. Solary trailing once more, just like they did what came one. They couldn't bring it back then. We still have yet to see the loser of a game score a goal. But Solary will be hunting for it. The ball upfield over Yukus trying to continue taking it slow. A great save from Kadian. The ball away for Archie. He's up high. Can't find a second touch. The fake for Cassio. That's going to be another two old top floats. And they found their stride in game number three. Very good there, Archie. I thought he was going to get the touch. And so did Exotic and Kadian. And then Yukus gets beaten now by that shot from Cassio. Great placement. Bottom left corner and out two for top floats. Oh, top bloke, two minutes left. A familiar story for the Solary side. Yes, it's going to go in game number three. Well, we see the same again. You're going to try to change that with the pass up field. Not going to work out, Flame. Look for that counter attack. Coming off the bat while Archie lurking around will not find a touch, but Cassio's there instead. In the bat while it will go. You just gets the clear. Kedian beats the ball by Flame. You can continue to play to the backboard. A chance saved by Cassio. A clear away up to Flame. And top are not letting anything slip by. Constant clears, constant pressure. They are playing amazing in game number three. For sure, and it's yet again that very aggressive place. Well, there's two defenders back, but the third is just lingering upfield, trying to receive the pass and make it so that they can immediately transition into a fence. Or they just go for bumps. That's another great idea too. Now Flame almost getting that crazy angle off of the backboard. Good defense on the side of Solary. Dismantles that one, now the pass infield, Yukis, can he find the double? No he can't because Archie's on the backboard and he gets that cleared. Archie ready for the ball, Kenny trying to force his way through with a double tap, not going to work out. Exotic, looking for the pass, but a demo on Yukis will say otherwise. Instead Cassio free ready to go upfield, face out Kenny, over one to the back wall, Yukis is there to take control, but playing ready for the pop out. We'll just keep the pressure going, time running out, 30 seconds left and top balls are on the attack. This is surely going to be their game, Jesse. The 30 seconds 2 0. Surely do not have the time to bring this comeback. No, I don't think they're going to be able to do it in this game either. Boyer, only 25 seconds to go. They need to find one now and then, quite preferably, over the kickoff as well. They might just find it here. Rakashio gets it cleared and the seconds just ticking by. It seems like we're yet again going to see a game in which the opponents do not manage to score. It's just the winners who managed to find the back of the net. Well, as the clock takes down, the ball will touch the ground and top vote will take game three and send themselves to match point. It's just now a matter of can somebody find a goal in the zero second. No, they'll be shut down. Top blokes, 2-1 in the series. Game four could be the end. And Archie once again, just such a strong showing, gets both a shot, a uh, goal and an assist on his tally. But Flame getting a lot of ball touches right there. He just seemed to be everywhere when he needed to be. Always pressuring that ball whenever Solari had some sort of time, some sort of uh, moment to really set up an attack. He was there to cancel exactly that and pressure them into basically just giving the ball away. And you're seeing just how dominant top blocks were in terms of boosted well. You're looking at the boost consumption and telling it all up, it's top blocks having about 400 just about boost consumed more than the Solary side. So they were rotating around the pitch, they were taking these 100 boosts, taking these small pads. They were being really clinical with it as well. They were not giving Solary a chance to recover, not giving them a chance to get an attack because there was always someone from top blocks there ready to ruin the day. And it's interesting as well because we saw a lot of demolitions coming out from top blokes in those first few games and that was the main way how they found the goal. In game one they had uh, at least two demos then in game uh, two as well. But this game it didn't really feel like uh, uh, their demos were that often. They were just very well timed. Whereas on the side of Solary they had more demos but they weren't as calculated as on the side of top blokes. Yeah, I've got to agree. I think Solary trying to you know, fall into that top boat play style they've seen working of getting the demos, getting the bumps and eliminating the opposition is a 2v3 there and a 3v3 to be totally honest. But they head to game four, match point for top bloke. Solary need to win this to stay in the upper bracket. Otherwise, 
Let's we'll be seeing them tomorrow all down in the Lord's Clubhouse, of course. If they can take this game, we're facing up against the Giants Gaming later on today. Try and get that spot in the winner's final, but that, of course, still to come. Oh. With a pass to Casio, making it ever so colossal. What a shot! Oh, I love this. This is prime Rocket League for me. Don't go for the shot there. Yeah, just pass it to your teammate waiting in the middle because he's going to take an absolute banger. 125 kilometers an hour there for Casio. Great placement too. And top blokes yet again taking the lead in this game. And I do feel that this might just be the last game that we see between these two teams. I think it might just be as well, Juicy. It's hard to take the ball high, straight on attack. A similar story the whole way through. I feel like I'm repeating myself constantly. And I'm always oh. saying top boats are on the attack. But finally yeah. something changed. But surely they've got bricks in their eyes. They can't see where they're shooting. They've missed every single opportunity possible. And the score remains 1-0. What on earth were they shooting at? Oh, it's heartbreaking because it wasn't the first time this series that it happened either. That first game wasn't clinical from Solary as well, but those were two prime opportunities really and opportunities that should have been scored, but it seemed that we have seen them score time and time again. Today apparently just isn't their day. It is definitely not their day. So they have looked better and been better. We've seen them even this serious game number two was such a good turnaround. They were looking like such a cohesive unit, a strong team, a difficult force to mess with, but they've regressed over time. They're back to that game one way. They are missing shots. They're giving top boats so many chances. They're missing easy touches. They're missing easy saves. And it's upsetting to see this team was looking so good. I had so much promise for them. There's another missed chance finally closed out as exotic. You can just tap that one in. But what on earth has this game been from Solary? Oh, that was such a good dunk though from you kids. Just getting completely a clutch assist there. Gets it onto the corner, the post, almost the uh, corner himself. Look quite wasn't in his favour, but the goal goes in. He won't be too unhappy with that. Solary finding, finding that goal that they so desperately needed. And this is the first time that Solary have returned the favour to that top bloke's goal. And they've done it once again. 2-1 now on the side of Solary. Finally getting their stride. A good pass from Exotic and Yukis easily beating out Flame. And I was so sure that this was going to be the last game, boy, because now every single game that we saw so far was goals from the winners and the losers didn't even get to, to have a chance almost. But now Solary completely switching it around. They can match this into their own hands, getting one dunk. And now this play as well, now leading this game bringing themselves back into this series and I think I think one person on the decks might be right I think there's a possibility we might be seeing a game five kind of up here you may just see a game five a story they're starting to get back into things now slowly but surely the top blocks we know what they have up their sleeve and well I think Solary should be cautious and worried about that. It's actually pushes up field and they show exactly what that is. The pass in centre, out to Casio. The shot barely saved by Exotic. The pressure can continue. Exotic, well done up field. A great pin centre. Kerrion's up, that's a tap down. That's gonna go in. Solary, they are doing so well. Now they have turned fine around in a matter of minutes. What a dunk there by Exotic. It turned out to be a pinch as well in Kerrion. Absolutely gorgeous positioning was far enough back so that he had the opportunity to still go for that Slot it into the back of the net. Oh, what a comeback we've seen here for Solary 3-1 to Solary. What a turnaround. Two minutes left But blocks of course we've seen them almost playing that comeback in game number two. Can I do the same again? Up high. Exotic. The clear away. That's into Kerrion. Coming in centre. No one to follow up in time. Archie looking for that clear away. Pass out over to Casio. Back to Archie once again, getting beat to the ball. Kerrion rushing for the touch. Not going to find it. Up high it will go to the backboard. Sorry. Want to make this free. A two goal lead is definitely not safe, but they know that fine well. Game two was way too close for comfort for them. They do not want a replica of that. No, for sure. But uh, on the side of top blokes, they lost their creativity. It's all very much straightforward what they're trying to do. Every single ball is just a pass to their teammates, but then it's not even a perfect pass, and there's always someone that could just uh, intercept that ball and then put up the pressure on the top blocks. They can't really find their way out of defense at all, Boyo. Yeah, top blocks found the winning formula, but so they found it as well, and top blocks, they've not adapted to that change. They've not 
walked around this, they're playing the same way and so they know what they're going to do now, they know how to counter, they know how to play against this. They done it in game two, you know, game one was the dominant win for Top Lot, so they figured it out. They figured out what to do to beat it. And we've seen Top Lot, you know, change things around at the end of the last, at the end of game two, and they've run things closer. But they need to do the same now. They've got 40 seconds left, otherwise they will be going to a game five, and I see it that looks so dominant for the Top Lot side. And I think the biggest issue is with how much offense Top Blocks is able to get. I feel like as soon as they get this offensive pressure, they're a top tier team. I love the way that oh. they go for passes. That's a great save there. But I love the way that they go for these infield passes and don't just take shots that are very easily saved. Instead, they keep up the pressure, keep the rotations, and then take the shots only when they actually have a very good angle. But as soon as they're stuck on defense, they can't really find each other. They can't find their way out of their own defense. Certainly so, the clock dies down, the game will be over, and we'll be heading to the game five, our first series of the Rocket Baguette at Summer Grand Prix. And of course, it's going to go to the game five. What else is better <laughs> fitting, Juicy? We've uh, we've seen the script, and it's a good one, boys. You want to stay here all week, and uh, game one or series one is definitely one to deliver right here, Solary. Versus Top Blocks, I had my doubts about it, to be honest. I thought it was going to be a one-sided affair. I was really thought that Yukis might be struggling together with Exotic and Carrion, and that we would just see Archie popping off on Top Blocks. However, Yukis has adapted absolutely beautifully throughout the entirety of this series. And interestingly enough, Solary has really adapted to the entirety of the game. Everything was played on the ground. Solary adapted and came out on top. Yeah, Solary have done so good at returning in these games. Game two, they've done it. Game four, they've done it. Unfortunately, there isn't a game six, so they're gonna have to do it again in game five. Otherwise, it's gonna be all for nothing. But they're a team who can figure someone out and can counter it. They've done it twice now. They've showed us their ability, but Top wasn't going to take note of this. They need to change something up. It's so they've got them down to a T. For sure. And I think their main issue should be just really looking for each other out of defense. If they can find these clears towards each other or start to get more of a solo play style where they dribble the ball out of defense, I think they're going to have an absolute treat of a game ahead of them. But if they start, if they keep playing into Solary's game style, they're going to be in lots of trouble here in game five. Well, as game five commences, the last one of the series, so the top looks. Who will find the win? Sorry, straight off the bat, already 1-0 no up, not even 10 seconds needed, and you can still find the, op the opening goal. Oh, what a dunk there though by Kyrian, absolutely reading that 50 to perfection. This is straight to Yukis, the goal is there as well. Lorraine now leading and we thought they were going to struggle so hard after that game one boy. You know, five nil to the side of top blokes, but you need to be able to carry it through an entire series. And that's just not been the case here. As they trail once more against this Lorraine side, almost a second goal being dropped in there. A great shot there, but not quite in. Close one, sorry, a one all lead. We're gonna make it to the drop down off the bat, but not going to find the back of the net. He's got to take the ball high, looking for another, not working out the drop down. What nice little goal. Cassio needing to break out, they're stuck in the defense, the shot's coming out. It's getting difficult for top blocks. They are low on boost, they are barely making these saves. It's already taking full advantage of it. One a minute in, one oh. Top blocks finally getting an attack for probably the first time this game. But instantly getting shot down, they cannot sustain that pressure, sorry, is not letting them. Oh, this is the chance though, Archie finds the goal, Cassio got it into the corner and just one defender stuck back. Couldn't quite do a lot there, Karrion wanted to challenge it into the corner, realised he was too late. And a great shot, puts Top Blood straight back into this game 5. They're straight back in, a close affair, one a piece. Both games Top Blood have won, so they were unable to score, so... That trend is going to have to change if they want to take this serious. The ball travels high. Sorry, looking to do it again, looking to make it 2 1. It's dead. The ball will be saved. A counter upfield. You can the last man back. Upfield to Exotic. Great pass and plays. That's it, a bad board. Exotic trying to follow up but cannot make it in time. Instead, Cassio, a one on one. A clear away. <laughs> Archie narrowly avoiding that demo. And instead, it's Yukis now. With a clear out to the side. Exotic barely slipping under. 
most gainless it's been so far. What I love there though was that loss of a 50 for Archie. When you're in defense, you don't necessarily have to win the 50-50 because if you win it, it just goes straight back to your opponent. If you slightly lose it, it will put the ball in a great position for your teammate and that is very dangerous from Archie. Can't really be punished there on the side of Solary. They should have probably done more with that. Just dropped straight into net, but they couldn't even find the shot. Hell, top looks, the back on attack. The ball travels high, no one to follow up. It's also like a free touch in the midfield. Archie finally coming in. 50 50, coming out to Cassio. Not able to find the dunk though. Cleared away, half the game gone. One a piece. Game five, proven to be a close one, proven to be a close series. Closer than we were initially expecting, I would say. I was definitely going more on the side of a top low 3 0 3 1. But Sony proved me wrong, instead, might find a win of their own. And a piece. Flame out to Archie, up high to make it two, the drop down, no one there to follow up, Cassio continuing the pressure once again, bumped in the process, but Flame comes in, trying to find that opening, trying to find that chance, but it's shut down constantly. And I love it when Cassio is in that third position where he's the last one back to be getting the pass, oh. often from Flame, almost getting the goal for himself there. But as a first man, he's constantly looking for the shot by himself rather than looking for the pass. He does so there though, actually tries to find Cassio straight back. A lot of passes coming in from top blokes, it's just the last one. It doesn't seem to be quite pitch perfect. It makes it so that it can't be slotted in. Drop down, a clear to flame upfield, he will go. That's coming center, a chance, oh, barely slipping by, Cassio up high, out to Archie, continue to play, oh, that's all feeling, Flame can he finish, no, it's to the bar board, Cassio's there, no on boost, oh. he gets a touch, another chance, oh. beat to the ball, the pressure remains, top blows, bound to score it seems, Cassio's out, to continue, bumps in the process, so many great defense, another chance, saved by Kenyon. That's up high to the bat board. Oh, he can't find the touch. That's going to go in. Top board finally find the lead. And yet again, it is Flame finding the back of the net there. He was just straight up. You could feel this goal coming. The pressure was mounting and it just kept flying in front of the Solary net. They couldn't get it away. And Flame is the one to finally punish it and find that 2 1 goal for Top Blokes. 2 1 Top Blokes. One minute left. and. So they, they've got to get a move on, they're going on attack, they are hunting for a goal, but they're not finding it just yet, instead Archie upfield, looking for the dunk, not going to find it, flame shot, barely takes out of harm's way, but Cassio are not going to let this go easily, the drop down, Kerrion, barely find that touch away, no chance for Sori, upfield, to the corner, Kerrion looking around, juking it up, the pass to Cassio, the clear away, Flames there, the pass to Archie, to make it free to secure the game, not oh. going to work out. So exotic, what a 50, that's coming centre, so is getting so close, could we see an overtime, our first series, a game 5 OT, it may just happen, but top boat saying otherwise, they're shutting the play down, they're clearing the ball away, the drop down, exotic, coming centre, up high, 10 seconds, they need to go on attack, they need to score now, Yukas to find the goal, it's coming centre, Cassio on the save, it's going to say otherwise, a clear oh, away, that's got to be it, that's, that's got to be the game, no one in there, top low, so win this series, oh what a close affair it was. The first winner in this Rocket Baguette Grand Prix Summer will be going towards top blokes with such a strong showing it wasn't strong in every single game but they do it when it matters most when well, Solary scored the first goal in this last game they did not give up they kept it going and they've been rewarded with it with the win very well played to the top blokes say they find the win at the end and a great great performance all around top blokes team played excellently. I think Cassio was the the main star attraction of that side, but oh, this that last game I should say, but Archie definitely was a kind of standout player the whole way through. Uh, I agree. He was playing out of his mind and just completely in the right place in the right time. I love it when a team like Topbox that is so reliant on the team plays and you saw it time and time again because they constantly need two players to do it, right? They, they've got either the passer, then the shooter, but often someone that's actually going for the uh, demos as well. So you have three people involved in every single offensive um, attack and then 
if you are not in sync with your teammates, if you're on a slightly different page, it can lead to goals on your own goal being scored because you're the one out of position. But Archie knows naturally what he needs to do in his team and it, it makes it so that it's a beautiful game to watch. It was an exciting series. It went above my expectation, above and beyond. And I've got to give props to Solari. They've done a great job at turning things around and a great job at clawing back at it. But at the end of the day, it was not enough. And they will be heading to the lower brackets, of course. That does mean that Top Lords, moving on to the winners at semi-finals, they'll be facing off against Giants Gaming later to come. But the next match is going to be a good one. It's going to be end point CEA facing off against Monkeys. We're going to have a quick rig and we'll be back very, very soon with a great match.